Hello everybody and welcome back to another new episode of the first ever series about Peppa the Pig on this channel. My name is GayD and today we're gonna take a dive into one of the most popular Peppa the Pig conspiracy theories. Now, this is not as much as a conspiracy as much as a fact because like this is true like it, it's undeniable the proof is just overwhelming okay like there's no point in trying to counter it it's basically confirmed and canon okay so today i'm gonna prove to all of you live that madame gazelle is a vampire okay so you might have heard of this from before and uh, mainly two uh, two episodes are cited the most obvious one once uh, pumpkin party and uh, madame gazelle's house but today we're gonna look at five different Peppa the pig episodes that prove she's a vampire now i've spent the last two years of my life binge watching Peppa the pig episodes like one after the other it's I impossible to have missed a single episode okay so what what we're gonna do is take each episode that i've select selected and we're gonna watch in order of uh, magnitude of proof like as we go along the proofs will get stronger and stronger now first episode nursery rhymes in this episode the kids are singing different nursery rhymes, for example. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb, Mary had a little... Yeah, pretty good, as you can see, might use some, a bit of a bass boost, but it's fine, it's really okay. Um, now, at the end of the episode, look what happens. Madam Gazelle, do you have a favorite nursery rhyme? But of course, Pedro. Would you all... Remember the sign she's making right now. It will come in handy later, okay? Everybody, hold hands. <laughs> ring a ring a roses. A pocket full of roses. A tissue, a tissue. We all fall down. <laughs> so, you're trying to tell me that out of all the possible choices, the writers had to choose the only one nursery rhyme that is possibly connected to the Black Death and say that it is Madame Gazelle's favorite. What the fuck? Now, uh, admittedly, this is a bit of uh, just like circumstantial evidence, but yeah, let's just say that it gets much, much worse. Now, moving on, we have this episode called Sun, Sea and Snow. So, basically like a bunch of the animals just go to the beach in the winter because they are retards. And um, yeah, surprisingly the water is cold, like too cold to swim for anybody. Except... What are you waiting for? It's lovely! If logics are to be applied to this series, we have two options. Madame Gazelle is not a gazelle, or she's a vampire that is not affected by the cold. Like, it's impossible. There's no way that thick swimsuit is gonna cut it. Like, she would freeze. Like, you, you've seen Mommy Pig's reaction. Okay, so this is a big red flag. How? How does that make any sense whatsoever? Okay, now moving on, we're gonna look at some further evidence. In the next episode, we find out more important things about Madame Gazelle. We find out in the episode titled Madame Gazelle's Living Party that she does not age. I mean, just look at these two pictures, okay? Like, this picture is when she was teaching to daddy pig, so this is about 30 or even 40 years 
prior to the events in Peppa the Pig. And now look at the current time. Like, she in 40 years, she has not aged a bit. And that's suspicious. I mean, she's better at not aging than Mike, Mike Durnt and Billy Joe Armstrong. Like, j just look at this. Like, sh she beat Billy Joe motherfucking Armstrong at not aging. That, that, that's an achievement, okay? She should be really proud of that. And another very important thing that we learn about her is that she was part of a rock band called the Rocking Gazelles. This will have very important ramifications when we explain the next episode, called Madame Gazelle's House. This episode reveals a lot about Madame Gazelle. She lives in a very old and weird house. It has a very... Victorian style aesthetic to it. It's very old and uh, in a bad shape, almost ready to collapse. Everything inside it reminds you of like the very old things of creepiness, of general uh, feelings of unsettlement. It um, it feels off, like everything from the paintings on the wall to the slopes and everything and all the details and besides that we also get more evidence that she does not age i mean just look at this sequence you'll understand yourself like that is my little christmas tree that's not little that's big it was from christmas a long time ago it was a little baby tree with a fairy on top after Christmas, I could not bear to throw it away, so I planted it in the garden. Yo! That tree must be very old to have grown to such a large extent. I would approximate um, 60 years, just like that, because, well, I, I can't really say the species of the tree, because it's about the pig, it does not have really that much logic or that much thought put into it, so I'll just make a rough approximation. And we also learn a few more things about her. Like in the sequence I just showed you, look uh, behind her, yeah, that's a guitar. Meaning that she was in the rocking gazelles, but the rocking gazelles are about her age then. So they are extremely old too, and that means they are all vampires. Yes, all three gazelles are vampires. Now, in this episode, we also get the reference to the fact that she likes bats. Ah, ah, you've got bats, Madame Gazelle! Ah, my friends the bats! They remind me of the old country. She makes that sign I told you to remember, to keep in mind from the first uh, episode I showed you. And she mentions the old country when making that sign. And that's extremely off because that sign resembles a bat. And bats are of course associated with vampires. But the weird thing is that she has a French accent, so she must be born in Transylvania, the land of the vampires, and uh, or at least spent some time there because like gazelles are not exactly native to Transylvania, and then moved to France and where she lived long enough to develop a musical career based on uh, her nickname in the band Gigi and, um, well, acquire a French accent. Then she moved to England because, yeah, Peppa the Pig officially happens in the United Kingdom. Yeah, it, it's weird, okay? So, as you can see, things are adding up. Like, it's all indicating towards her being a very cold, old unaging creature and that resembles very much a vampire but the final proof will come in the next episode 
this episode is called Pumpkin Party and well here we got the most explicit proof that Madame Gazelle is a vampire and as we've uh, shown before also her friends yeah the rocking gazelles and uh, well it shows that some adults might know a bit more than they pretend to know like vampire i don't know oh um it's someone who sleeps all day and stays awake all night Ooh. i think Susie's mother knows about Madame Gazelle being a vampire. I mean, just look at her response when she, Susie asks her, like, what is a vampire? You know, like, she's uh, thinking uh, about something, you know, like, as if trying to hide something, to cover something up. And uh, then we have this... Golden phrase that makes it official canon because the narrator of the show notices how Madame Gazelle does not have a reflection. Madame Gazelle, I'm a vampire. Ah, a vampire. That brings back memories of the old country. That's odd. Madame Gazelle doesn't have a reflection in the mirror. So based on everything we've seen so far. The vampire thing was not just a Halloween special, uh, special. It's obvious that Madame Gazelle has consistently been shown and has consistently acted as a, like a vampire. Like even in this episode you've seen how she does again like this sign with her hands and reminding her of the old country. This is not a conspiracy. I think that the proof I've shown so far is enough to convince anybody with a rational mind that she is a vampire. This is officially not a conspiracy. This is a fact.